mention paper mache and some people think of this drippy strips of paper and sticky messes. But it doesn't have to be this way. Paper mache can be easy, tidy, and very satisfying to work with. This is instant paper mache. There's a few brands and varieties. I like to use fast mache because it dries a little quicker. The paper is ground, the adhesive is included, and all you need to do is add water. It's lightweight, inexpensive, non-toxic, and it keeps on the shelf until you're ready to use it. Today I'm going to show you how to use instant mache in a way that requires very little hand-to-product contact, but it's also an extremely satisfying hands-on experience. Start by putting down a piece of waxed paper or pallet paper to block moisture. Next, a piece of fabric, such as cotton canvas, burlap, or a piece of cut-up old jeans. Fabric will help absorb moisture, and since the mache will shrink as it dries, the fabric will move with it. If you were to work on top of cardboard or paper, it would wrinkle or buckle and warp. Plus, this can be washed off and reused again. The fabric size depends on what size piece you are making. Now this process can be used to make small ornaments, such as this size, or larger pieces of wall art. Just have a piece that's larger than the artwork will be. Next, mix the instant mache in a bowl. If you have sensitive skin, you might want to wear gloves for this step. Now the pulp is non-toxic and safe, but it may cause dryness of skin. Enough can be mixed up ahead of time for an entire class and stored in an airtight container. I'm going to use about half a cup of mache to cover this oh, eight by eight piece of burlap. You can adjust that amount up or down to make enough for your project. Slowly add some water. Now, you'll notice that I'm using a squeeze bottle because that allows me a little bit more control than pouring. Add about four to five tablespoons of water and mix it in. I'm looking for the consistency of clay or perhaps pizza dough. It's slightly firm, yet very pliable. Make sure the water is thoroughly mixed with the mache by pressing it against the sides of the bowl and by working it between your fingers and your hands until it feels smooth without any dry lumps in it. Tear a section of plastic wrap from a roll, just a regular food grade plastic wrap, enough to cover the fabric with maybe just a little bit extra hanging off of the sides. Now if I was doing something larger, I might want to use two pieces of wrap, but one is fine for this project. Place it over the mache, and you can begin shaping it with your fingers. And oh my goodness, the squish is great. Now you could use a rolling tool to roll this out flat if you'd like. You could use modeling tools tools such as this, along with your fingers, form it to shapes and textures. You can use perhaps plastic utensils to press textures into it, like a fork perhaps. Go back to my spoon here. Now you can also press objects such as a texture plate into the pulp or use cookie cutters to make a defined edge. Just enjoy the process. If you change your mind, you can always push it down again and start over. It's so much fun to just be able to move this pulp in underneath the plastic wrap. Now, it's important to leave the plastic in place because it helps hold the pulp into the shape that you've created. Allow it to dry overnight. Thicker portions may need a little bit more time. It helps to put it in front of a fan and every once in a while turn it over so that the air is able to reach the backside and that helps, helps it to dry from the backside as well. Once it's dry, gently pull the plastic away like so. Now, the edges can be trimmed with scissors. If you'd like to make them a little tidier, the fabric can be kept as part of the piece or it can be gently pulled away from the back side. Now, using burlap here, I like to leave a little bit of the burlap around the edges so that I can come back and deconstruct the weave a little bit to create some fringe along 
the edge. If you'd like a smoother surface, you can use a little bit of sandpaper and just smooth it down wherever you'd like. Now let's talk a little bit about color options. This can be painted with acrylic or watercolor once it's dry. The mache is actually a paper surface, so you can get a variety of effects. You can use the paint straight from the tube and get a very solid color, or you can add a little bit of water and create watercolor effects and softer colors. Let me show you another fun way to color it. While the pulp is wet, we can add a few drops of color onto the surface. Then, while you manipulate it, it works into the piece and mixes with each other, and you get kind of a tie-dye effect, like this. Now, I like to use a washable tempera if I'm doing it this way, because it could get on the fingers or perhaps on the tabletop, and that helps keep it tidy. Here's a piece that has had the color mixed into it that way and dried. Now, thinner areas might be a little bit more delicate and easy to break off. So I do recommend sealing it with some Mod Podge or even covering it with some white glue. This will help make it strong and it also gives it a glossy finish like this. You can form hanging holes while the pulp is wet. But if you forget, you can always drill a hole into the paper mache using a sharp tool. If something unfortunate happens and a piece of it starts to break off, simply reattach with a little bit of white glue. It is all about the squish. Trust me, you won't want to make just one. Check out our recommended materials list, a free downloadable PDF instruction sheet, and example images at dickblick.com lesson plans.